Live Channels Television event. Let's begin the journey anew for the cause for which he lived. Baba Kekere, inna lahi wa inna lahi rajihun. May Almighty Allah accept the repose of his soul. May Al Janna Fridaus be its final abode. I also pray for Mama and the children for the strength and fortitude to bear this great loss. Thank you very much. Radio, Tamos Radio Lagos. Only Baba Jani to wash us soon be a joy. What do you say, Marie? A tea and reloading in Nicoleco. I call you in Baba Jay. Baba Jay and Rere. Womba Baba Jay and it's your bar. I want to know it all is Shelu. Just it's your pay. I shall do it anymore. One or Lanu P or Polo Pipe. A more Kiko Jinky Baba. E to ja pe ope niyan lo bu mu ninu re tori pe baba o be eleyi lo si orun won ni a o le gbagbe baba LKJ o ipinle rere ti eko duro le lori loni baba lo fi lele won wa gba ni adura wi pe ki olorun ko foriji baba alhaji latif ka o de jakande ko si ta won si aljono fidaus ese adupe Mr Governor sir your Excellencies, all other courts is duly extended. With your kind permission, I will introduce the Chief Judge of Lagos State, Honorable Justice Kazim Alugba, ably represented by Honorable Justice Taufikat Oyekon Abdullahi. You are very much welcome. Next on the program lineup is the documentary on the life and times of the first civilian governor of Lagos State, Alhaji Latif Kayode Jakonde, C-O-N. Please, let's all be attentive as the documentary is telecast. Um. Um. All courtesies uh, duly observed. Uh, Mr. Governor, with your kind permission and with concurrency of the distinguished ladies and gentlemen seated, I'm going to speak in my local language, in my tongue. Moke Gominawa Modeke Ibakeji Gomina Atia won o lori won Moke Bobo won a bagba do wambi meole ma daru koton Moke Bobo won ba awa la e lua Moke Yawa O lori baba wa alaji jakonde mo ke gbogbo omo iya wa ton wa njoko eh olorun aba wa mu ilu na dani e kini mo fe dupe fun gomina ati ijoba fanfa ni eni fun ta nse leni Yet, I won't say then if my bow and more duper, more than duper, and no look of Bob Bowman in your me, no look of Bob Bowman, I share that or shake by 
papa julo loruko won to wa njoko nbi and almost 40 years after ni eh o wa pelu wa oloye olorun fun mi eh ba sorun baba lajua ni won nisin eh awon alajo se baba wa niyan ohun ni eh akowe akoko lede oyinbo the first secretary of the elected government in Lagos State, along with my brother, who was a lumimbi. My two top cases: Senator Wa, Senator Adefuye, who was a lumimbi. Mama, we are tumba, are tumba bushura, or no wambi. Bobo wanya, laje, amuti wa makwe ni olu olu ranse olu gbowo boya yi ta won yin bo le pe ni eran boys eh pelu baba wa egbon wa alaji jakonde eh awon ba awon baba wa won ni ka to re ni won lo digbo won ni ka to re fun won lo de odan eh ka to ri ru olukayo de jakonde o di kese eh o di kese ni to ri pe omo luwa bi ni won ebon luwa bi se ri won je ojo gbon won je oluko we eh ni gba ta wa wa ni odo ta wa nbo isi eh won ko we sinu we royin eh dele service eh don west ni oruko ebo ti won un pe won o eh o se o se a ma lo du iwe won ra ni ni to pe okun fun ogbon okun fun oye okun fun ito ni sona ni jo yan eh ni gba yan na awon be awon jejo wise eh ti bisa ona ba njo ohun je ayi ko to eh be na ni alaji ijo se be na ni alade odun ewu awon ton je o ko we eh ni gba yan ni yan ti won fi awon odo bi ona eh baba wa ja kon de eh o je ni ti o so ni na ku na o je ni ti nkan ta won po npe ni flamboyancy ka wo ajo re pete ka kogo lu sorun ka je gbogbo e eh oni wa pele ni won won gbele aye je je won lo kan juwa won la nu loju eh anu yen awon ton bi won ni won fi jo eh nitori pe awon baba wa so pe baba won agba ayin na jakonde eh won ni oninu ore ni eh ayin na jakonde agbe fakari eh ibi ti baba wa ti jade ni ile oninu ore ile ologbon nitori pe ifa ogbon eh imoni baba de lo gbogbo yi ni ijoba sise won laanu loju nigba ti won se ijoba won ma nfi aye sile lati ri awon eyan ni role n role ijo kan mo de be awon eyan lo re pete o ayi o mi sun loju won ni mu mo o tutu mu won ah mo wo mo ni ah mo ma le gbogbo awon eyan won yi pe kan ma lo an wa lo la ah won ni taju taju ma ri won ma ri won ti won le ye fi won pe won fi emi won jin gbogbo ilu eh eni ti otutu mu nkan mi le ti be se bi baba bi alaji jakonde mo se mo se si ilu ni en ta ba de n soro lagos state ta jo le le ni won je ni kan pataki you know pa ya to ri pe won se governor eh e ran ti ngba ni won so pe gede gbe ile ko wa ti an so pe rara won won wa ni kirikiri a ma lo ba won emi pelu alaji daudu ati ferera a ma lo ba won won tun so pe oro yi a eko ni wa ni gedegbe ni no gbe won ni won ti se iwe a se memorandum emi ni mo lo wa iwe ka kiri won ni iwe bayi mo ran ti pe iwe kan won pe ni justice affairs baba abad makoli lo se iwe yan ito iko wa nbe ti a lo wa ninu ogba e won na se gbo memorandum yen iwe yen lo wa de 
the case for Lagos State. Add that to so you can do some bang bang, but I do more or you love Baba Bawa or Baba Mia will love Colonel for it. Baba Nikam where you are, Lagos State, I live that duro, I live Rowano, I say Boko Alan, I dedicate thirty five per cent of what on Wale, the Western region, a Colotinwa. What I be daughter of Baba Abulo, Babani, and I told that Duro, Boko Shay, Nibabawa, and Jack on the Oshe, and me Nigba has to go for more, more, but more key one, or more Jack on the Agbefa Kari, or more Lomu, Akpen, or more Lower Agogo, Akore, and Yodibo, Katore for a daughter, Katori Ru, Jack on the Oji Kese, and she gone. Thank you and God bless. Please can we applaud Prince Tajuddin Oluyole Lucy once again. Thank you very much, sir. In continuation of the eulogies to Al Haji Latif Kayode Jakonde, I'd like to invite to the microphone the Secretary to the Government of Baba Jakonde. Please put your hands together for Ashiwaju or Lauren Fumi Basharu. Please let us applaud Baba Ladura once again. I stand on the existing protocol, <clears throat> except that I want to thank Mr. Governor for keeping, for not only keeping his promise, but for making sure that Jaconde is remembered the way it is done today. Because the day we were doing the eight days, he promised that government would celebrate Jaconde. And this celebration is what we are doing today. I also salute our KBACs. I specifically asked for one KBAC because he was a part of the government that time. But he is absent. What is he going to do? He going to do? He's one of those who stood firmly with government and uh, is still around. Some of his colleagues have gone. May their soul rest in perfect. One mark of a great man is the power of making lasting impressions upon the people he meets. Another is to have handled matters during his life that the cause of after events is continuously affected by what he did. It was Sir Winston Spencer Churchill, the man of the century in England at, the, at his time. The quotation above ably represents the life and time of Alaji Latif Kaode Jakonde, the charismatic governor of Lagos State between 1979 and 1983, here in after referred to as LKJ to become the first governor, civilian governor of Lagos State, LKJ won the primary election of his party, Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN, at Mayflower Hotel, Olo and Shogo Mushin, in 1979, and went on to win the general election 
in August 1979. He was sworn in on Monday, October 1, 1979. While planning to be governor, LKJ had set up committees on various subjects which resulted in production of 14 position papers, among which were on education, health, land matters, creation of new local governments, revenue generation, housing, agriculture and cooperatives, water supply, waste disposal, university for Lagos, road development, all in accord with the four cardinal programs of the UP of his party, UPN. Free educate, which were free education at all levels, free medical service for all, integrated rural development, and full and gainful employment. Immediately after swearing in, LKJ went into action. He made a live broadcast on the state radio in the evening. That is the popular radio Lagos of October 1, declaring education free at all levels. On October 2, 1979, he made two appointments. Prince Bayo Shiemi, special advisor today on uh, local government and community matters, a 29-year-old Vatata journalist was made his chief press secretary, and Mr. Alon from Ebashon appointed secretary to the state government. While first informing Mr. Abashon about his appointment on September 27, 1979, LKJ requested him to arrange for the first cabinet meeting to take place on Thursday, 4th of October, 1979, four days, the fourth day of his swearing in. List of commissioners was approved by the House of Assembly on 3rd of October, and they were sworn in with the SSG that same day. The first cabinet meeting did take place on October 4, and this was arranged it was easy for Mr. Bashon to arrange this meeting because of the assistance from Tunde Fanimoko, a prominent Lagos uh, chief, K.A. Bameke of blessed memory, and Tola Odukomaya, all of who, Tola Odukomaya is also late, all of who were introduced to him by Adesheye Ogunlewe. They were later top permanent secretaries in the government. That meeting of 4th of October considered and approved the, the 14 papers mentioned above. And these papers were adopted as government policy of the administration. Landmark achievements. The first four years recorded achievements that met the objective of LKJ. And what was the objective? Abundant benefit for majority of our people. Some notable ones were eradication of three ships. When that government resumed, there had been three ships due to shortage of classrooms. And he did this with the massive construction of functional classrooms. Low cost housing heavily subsided. The first blocks of flats of houses made with red bricks were at Amu World of Inter. If you get to Amu World of Inter, and the main road coming from Oshodi on the right, you see those red brick houses. They were the first set of houses built by Jacondi for low income. The target set for four years was 50,000 units. But the administration was able to achieve just over 9,000 units, which indeed is a feat by national standard in Nigeria. Expansion of health services. We met many health centers uncompleted 
they were not only completed, many others were built, and general hospitals were also built. It is significant to, to mention in the public that as at that time, 1979, Ikeja, Lagos, Baragri, had general hospitals. The Kururu did not have. But under Jakonde, we had the general hospital. Road development. He embarked on massive construction of roads and resurfacing of many throughout the state. No drainage, no new road was the mantra. If there was going to be any road based on request by the residents and the government was not ready to make drainage, there will be no action. Land policy. This facilitated acquisition of land for government projects, especially construction of school classrooms and low-cost housing scheme. I want to mention two of such lines, and this was done with what Jack Conde called cancellation of last-minute allocations. If money was unfilled, they were shared among the elites. The council the allocation. Dolphin Estate was where we have EJ Estate today, the house and the local housing housing. There was also it was also Sanfield and allocated to Ellis. He cancelled and used the area for local housing. Later medium housing emerged in the area. This same land policy which he termed he did, he did make the special brokers, which he titled Land Policy of the New Order, turned Victoria Island and Ikori to gold mine for government. Many waterworks. As at the time Jack Conde took over, we had Iju Waterworks serving Lagos. And during the studies before he came into government, we found that Iju will not serve will not serve certain areas like Amu Wadobi, for instance, like you could do and other suburbs. So he built 10 mini water, 10 mini water works to complement what he do was giving us. Why a foreign finance project was in the pipeline. Water transposition. Three big passenger boats were launched, named Babake Kere, Engbeti, and Itafaji. Where people call Babake Kere today, how did they come up? Not through the boat. We were in Abesan to commission the house in Estate. Shibofama Olo was there, the wife was there. Then an excited advisor on housing had to make a speech. And he got so excited that along the line he said, Today I call Jack on the Babaka Kiri. I will always the big one. And when we were naming the ship, the she and the boats, Babaka Kiri came up. And the popular in Betty, that's Marina, and also Itavaji. Only con stadium where we are today. The only con stadium was built through direct labor by works management board, whose general manager then was Adesheye Ogunewe, Lagos State University. Process to establish Lagos State University at Ojo was completed before he left. The vice chancellor, late Professor Folabi Olimide, had been appointed, and the gov governing council, headed by the then commissioner for education, Mr. Alon from Ebachon had been put in place. Construction of Metro Line. Light rail, Metro Line is light rail, which was to run from Yaba to Marina, passing through Abad Makoli and Ido, had taken off before the coup of December 31, 1983 stopped it. In fact, an amazing thing that happened. 
which is rare these days, was at Sheikh Shagari, the president there, the vice president, Dr. Ekweme, both of uh, blessed memory, the senate president, Dr. Joseph Wyatt, and uh, the speaker of the House of Representatives, late Right Reverend Hon right, right Honorable Edwin Umezioke, were at the groundbreaking ceremony of the Metro Line at Yaba. They were excited, the president was convinced it was right, and this was, was a, a result of regular rapport between Alaji Jakande and Seo Shagari at monthly meetings, which I had the privilege of accompanying him to attend. The public service. AKJ was very friendly with the public servants of Lagos State. He won their hearts by his regular public acknowledgement of their loyalty and dedicated service. One significant action he took, which further endeared him to workers, was his insistence that the career grade level should, in Lagos, end at 17, like federal workers, and not level 16, like in other states. At that time, the permanent secretary was on level 16 in the state. The, in the states and Lagos. But after considering issues, the reason that federal government and Lagos state government are on the same territory and they are facing the same workload, why give our permanent secretary less? That was how he gave them level 17 then. He's no longer 17 now, but that was what he was then. AKJ extended other enhanced frame benefits to the workers. He made sure they were trained and retrained. Conclusion. I like the doctor Latif Kaode Jakonde was an epitome of discipline, especially as regards the party, UPN. A passionate progressive, a lover of his people, and above all, a person who pursued whatever he believed in. Whatever he believed in with commitment and dedication. I will say this was why this, this uh, attribute of him, that was why he was able to overcome all the obstacles against his government when he was in power. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you very much. Ashiwaju Olorun Fumi Basharun. Mr. Governor, Your Excellencies, all other courtesies duly extended. Next, I will invite a distinguished historian of repute, Honorable Adekunle Ali. Let's applaud Baba. A round of applause for him. Excellency, Mr. Governor, and his able wife, the First Lady of the State, all protocol observed. My speech is going to be very short because I got to know of this invitation to speak at this tribute paying ceremony here today. I don't know where to start, because Alaji Jakonde was a, like elephant. When you stand in one place, you don't know the whole size of this elephant. And from what you have all heard today and read in the paper, 
I am not going to repeat all this again because my association with Alaji Jakonde began when I was elected to the House of Representatives in 1979. He gave us a free hand, and he never questions most of what he did. But privately, he monitors what goes on in that house. And some of us took it as a responsibility to report to him the affairs of that house. I remember in 1982, 81, the then governor, the NPN governor, led by the late Shehu Shagari, introduced a bill to the House, to the National Assembly, for revenue allocation between the federal, state, and the local governments. And under this bill, it is only revenue coming in mainly from uh, the, the oil and uh, the revenue generated from personal income tax of federal civil servants were uh, allocated to the federal government and the others were not allowed to share in this revenue. So, Alayi Jakonde wrote a letter to all of the members of Lagos State in that, uh, in that uh, assembly, trying to find out what was going on. I serve as a member of the Revenue Committee. So, I wrote a 12-page memo to him, in which I described what we know as the information relating to our revenue. And in reply, he sent me a letter under the letterhead of Lagos State Government, dated 6th of April, 1982. I read, Chief Latif Adekunle Ali, House of Representatives, National Assembly, Tafar Balewasko, Lagos. My dear Adekunle, federally collected revenue. I have just read your brilliant paper on the above named subject. I shall certainly take all necessary actions suggested in the paper. At our last meeting, the 12 governors decided to write a joint letter to the President, I shall send you a copy of the letter when I have it. With kindest regard, signed Alaji L.D. Ekondi. Now, uh, I, because of shortage of time, I cannot continue with my tribute, but I will make a short reference to what is not known to most of the people here. That was the peers of his incarceration in the prison in Lagos here. After about a month, he was removed to different places. I mean the detainees. And he was uh, sent to Shokoto prison. I was the major channel of the communication between him and the whole world at that time. I sent him cuttings from papers and stories which I also had. He was very really appreciative of this, and as a result of this, he decided to write a book because unemployment was the rage of the society at this time. Then he started the work on what he called full employment for all Nigerians. I believe this book is yet to be published. Past it may be published after he has passing. But what I can say about it is that the problem of the country is ever most present in the mind of Alaji Jack on the journey in his lifetime. 
and and I think with this, this tribute is not short of what should have been to him. To him. But I pray that his departure will bring a better Nigeria and that his family and uh, some of those who associate or are with him will continue to follow the path he laid behind. So I rest on his help. Thank you very much. Please can we applaud Honorable Adekule Ali Maurice Sandali. Thank you very much, sir. Going on with tribute to Al Haji Latif Kade Jakonde. I like to call on Special Advisor to Mr. Governor and Chieftain C Affairs. Please put your hands together as I welcome Prince Bayo Oshiemi for his tribute. Please can we applaud Prince Oshiemi. Mr. Governor, sir. His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, former governors of Lagos and Ogun here present, Deputy Governors of Lagos and Ogun here present, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, too many people are spoken about who Alaji Latif Jaconde represented in public office. I'm therefore not going to bore you repeating what they had said. There are three things for which Alaji Jaconde stood out as personal attributes. One, he was a man of honor. He believes that once you take honor away from a man, he's left with nothing. And that was why he faithfully implemented the four cardinal programs of the Unity Party of Nigeria that sponsored him into office. Before his inauguration, the outgoing military administrator advised him to go back to the people and say that given the situation on ground, he could no longer implement free education. Alaji Jaconde's reply can be a repetition here. He thanked the military administrator and said, no man of honor would dare do such a thing. A two-way contract, one side had been performed. For him to renege on that promise would make him dishonorable. He would not do so. And on his inauguration on Monday, October 1, 1979, he declared free education throughout Lagos State. And did all the other things. Another aspect of a man of honor that Alaji Jaconde was, and still is, at his inauguration, he did say that his administration would take a holiday from ministering to the rich, that previous governments had served only the rich people of this state, and that he would take a holiday from them and first attend to the mass of our people. He did so in the provision of low-cost houses, full employment, and free health services. He was to implement his plan for the rich in a second term, but this was aborted by the military incursion into governance. But he did fulfill that promise to the rich 
when he became the federal minister for works. He visited somewhere in Ikoi and saw a horse-shaped island and decided that hydraulic sand filling would be done so that the place now became the shape of a banana. And that is how Banana Island came into being. His idea was that he was going to create an event for the rich so that while alive, they will see and enjoy heaven on earth. Today, not many people know that the originator of Banana Island is Latif Kaode Jakonde. There is a nexus between the first civilian governor of Lagos State and the present governor of Lagos State. The nexus is this. Because Governor Babaji De Sawolu is uh, people's oriented, he assigned his chief of staff to pay a visit to Alaji Jakonde's home immediately after his election to see the state of his abode. And I think he immediately directed on receipt of that report from the chief of staff that some renovation should take place at 2 Bishop Street, Ilupeju. It was done. Also, because like Alaji Jakonde, Governor Babaji De Sawolo has passion for education. He has also taken steps to ensure that one of the children of Alaji Jakonde is sponsored by the state to undergo a master's degree in the United Kingdom. I believe that Jakonde cannot die because he lives in the hearts of the people. And I'm sure, given the footsteps that Sawolu is treading, he is going to go down in history as another Babake Kere of Lagos State. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Prince Bayo Oshin. Hear me? I'd like to let you know what I forgot to say earlier, that he was the Chief Press Secretary to Alhaji Latif Jakonde while in office. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Governor, distinguished guests, all courtesies duly extended, we will now quickly run through the documentary on the life and times of the first civilian governor of Lagos State, Alhaji Latif. Kayode Jakonde C O N. We had very, very high hopes at independence. We had read about other countries and we thought that uh, immediately we got independence, all the good things of life would descend on us. But I think we have all learned from experience that it takes some time. It takes some experience and some uh, level of tolerance, uh, some uh, a period of uh, tutelage to be able to arrive. And I think what is happening is we have been paying the price of uh, independence. With the advent of democracy in the country and legal state, after years of military rule, it became apparent that the state, as the capital and seat of power of the giant of Africa, needed a focused and dedicated democrat who will steer its ship to greater development. This democrat who came on board was Alaji Latif Kaode Jakonde. A man that ruled for only four years and three months, and almost 40 years after, his mark, his records, his hands are still clearly 
and the sound of time. He took up the mantle of leadership of the state on October 1st, 1979, on the platform of the Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN, making him the first executive governor of Lagos State. As a young and vibrant governor, and working with the template of the founding fathers of the state, Alaji Latif Kaode Jakonde immediately formed his team and armed with the manifesto of the party embarked on massive infrastructural developments which are still points of reference to today. As the governor of the state, he recorded many firsts. Armed with a vision to improve the educational standard as well as make education accessible and affordable for the less privileged, his administration built many neighborhood primary and secondary schools, raising the primary schools in Lagos from 605 with 434,545 pupils to 812 with 531,001 pupils, as well as secondary schools from 105 with 107,835 pupils to 223 with 167,629 students. By 1983, he had constructed over 22,000 classrooms with maximum of 40 students per class. At the heels of the construction of these schools was the establishment of a singular school system and free education for primary and secondary schools. He formatted three sets of school classes to one without failing. Only one he is the most progressive individual that you ever have. Progressive to the core. He declared education free at all levels. That was at a time the military administration that he succeeded was advised by officials of the Ministry of Education to increase school fees when schools resumed in September 1979. But he had gone far and wide to campaign for people to elect him and in return he will give free education. So on his first day in office, he declared education free for all children of school age from primary to university level. Constructed many more classrooms which people call poultry shed. But I want the public to know that he was able to accommodate all the primary school uh, pupils and the secondary school pupils at that time. But of course, he became the foundation of many of the big uh, schools which you found around. Him. So that shows his foresight. He built set of classrooms to accommodate large chunk of students. And then that, 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 that sort of encouraged most of, most of us and made people to go to school. And then even though we were many then, some people called those classrooms poetry. But he used that to scrap all the theory shifts. An education system, which was three shift system, at the time he came in, in May 1st, 1979, became one shift system and they did not affect the kind of education we got at that time. It was still qualitative, but they are the kind of classrooms that gave access, basic access to basic education to people like us, and then that made us what we are today. Um, for it, he got a commendation from UNESCO, a letter special letter written to him and a plaque to acknowledge the fact that the man used an ingenious method to solve a very critical social problem. He also established the Lagos State University Lasso, the Lagos State College of Education and the Teacher Training College. His administration visualized the rising population of Lagos 
which continue to attract people through provision of adequate and affordable shelter. He constructed over 30,000 housing units. These include Ijaye, Dolphin, Okiafa, Ije, Abeson, Iponri, Ipaja, Abulenla, Epe, Amu Wodofi, Ani Kotamo, Surulere, Iba, Ikorodu, Padagri, Isheriolou, Orishigun, to mention a few. These houses were affordable for the common man and are still standing today. A testament to this achievement is that in the construction of these houses, values and standards were not compromised. To facilitate the mass transit, he introduced the Metro Line project. This was cancelled by the succeeding military regime. Also, the quest for intermodal transport system led to the introduction of ferry services in 1980 with two passenger commercial boats christened Babakikere and Itafaji. These boats plied the mile to marina route. Within the four years of his administration, he built the present Lagos State Secretariat, which houses ministries, departments and agencies, MDAs, built the popular roundhouse, which for a long time was occupied by subsequent governors till the movement of the office to the Lagos House. He also built the Lagos State House of Assembly. Dead. Waste Disposal Board, which is now called Loma. He created water management, uh, water operation, which is now called Water Management Board. He created Works Management Board, then, then the Schools Management Board to look after secondary and primary schools. What we now have is Suburb and uh, Suburb and Tescom. So he tried as much as possible to look at all <coughs> avenues where the greatest good will be benefited by the entire citizenry. As a journalist, he brought his training to the fore with the construction of the Lagos State Television Channel 8 and Lagos State Radio. The radio has since given birth to other stations. Due to its recognition of the importance of protecting government and security documents, the administration took over the ownership and financing of the Lagos State Printing Corporation in 1980. The healthcare system of the state took a dramatic turn when its administration constructed 20 health centers and went a step further with the assurance and provision of free health care while he saw to the completion of the Bagada and Ikorodu General Hospitals. Between 1979 and 1983, the administration of Latif Jakonde established the Water Management Board and the Waste Disposal Board on the 18th of August, 1980. With emphasis on providing potable water for the people, the administration constructed the Adino Water Works. This helped propel the water supply in the state to 18.16 million liters per day. He also expanded and modernized Iju Water Works. The result of the expansion was an increment in the daily water production capacity from 159 million to 204 million liters per day. Added to this was the construction of 10 mini water works. Adrian Water Project. It's another project Lagos will never forget in life. Within a very short, short period, that dam was constructed and fiber water was running in Lagos City. And apart from that, many waterworks were con constructed in most of the local governments. So that uh, almost every local government was supplied with uh, fiber water. There was a shortage of water in Lagos at that time. He started establishing many water works that, so that the water will run over and then you can 
be able to get water all over. Bariga, eh, Aguda. He created an oil rig for the state with the construction of Victoria Island Ekwe Road. His administration also constructed, rehabilitated, and resurfaced the Ekwe Ijebuode Road, Alimosho Idimu Ebe Road, Oba Akron Avenue, Town Planning Way Ilupeju, Victoria Island Road, Twin Street Ikeja, amongst others. He established an asphalt plant for the Department of Works. This asphalt plant has since been upgraded and is now known as the Lagos Public Works Corporation. When we came into government, there was no Ekwe Expressway. We used to go to the Ekwe through Makoko in the bush there. And we would stay for about two, three, four days in the bush there. And he kept on saying, we have to build a road, we have to open this place up. We have to open this place up. We have to open this place up. So he knew it. Even if that was before we came to government, we were campaigning then. So when we got into government, he said to me and many others, of course, I said, Deepo, it's time to open this road. You recall when we started Lagos TV, they were jamming it. The federal government was jamming it. Each time we wanted to produce, you see, they would, our own would not show. It's the federal government one that we show. And then what do we do? What do we do? And we got somebody to bring in a special machine for us. We found a way to get that machine into the country. Because if they knew we were bringing the machine, they, they won't let it come. So we brought the machine to come. And we established and that is why you have a TV today. In order to bring sanity to Lagos roads, Jack on this administration established the first state traffic management authority. To his credit, Lasako Insurance was established and also a small scale industries credit scheme. With a strong quest for alternative medical care, his administration also scored a first with the establishment of the Traditional Medicine Board. In his short but eventful administration, Latif Jaconde touched every part of the state and ensured that none was left behind. His frugal lifestyle also came to the fore when he served his term as governor from his modest Ilupeju residence. According to him, he said he came to the world for pure, I mean for, um, for ordinary people. We have a good man that is ready to help and he helped till the end of his life. He built schools, that is for the public too. Fortunately, I'm a beneficiary of, this, of, of the school. I wish I was beneficiary of the houses or, you know, but the man would never agree. So, you know, he has how many estates all over. None of us, none of the family would say, okay, I have uh, one of these flats. It was, uh, it was about to start Banana Island then. I remember I was there when he was inspecting the site, when he was minister. We have nothing there. And as, as my father used to say, you can only sleep on one bed at a time. My brother was a very quiet boy from the youth. If, if, if you are playing with anybody around him and you said, oh, you hey, my brother will tell, tell you, if you, if I had that, oh, you would that from you again, you will not come near me again. He if said, if said, if he said someone else is not correct, that means he's finished with the person. It's not going to do anything with you. The only abuse you need to abuse is don't do that again, Abo. You Abo, Abo. Be somebody. When we want to, when about resuming, resuming, you have to make your list of what you want to do buy in school. And if somebody, and when you pass that list to him, what it does, it gives you a date to come and defend of your proposal, what you intend to do. And he will actually screen one item by item. And uh, the, the best you can do within is questioning. Is the best you can get from what 
Wow. And he was a simple man. Jesus Christ. Hard working and to live and to lover of people. I like you, Doctor Latu, called Jack and Dee, was a great lover of people. A man just not so effortless to people to their social status, he treated everyone equally. He, he, he never for once held back his aunt to render people that come knocking every day or weekend. He, he was so outstanding in his own style that where once he took his seat, at say 9, 10 in the morning, he would not leave that seat until the meeting ended. So, how did he cope? He was a fan of Tom Tom and uh, uh, Lemon Vicks. My guy at meeting will have his packet of Tom Tom. That sweet packet of Tom Tom in his, in his, in his uh, pocket. And if, uh, if he felt like refreshing himself, he would open it, throw one tom tom in it. So he, he was a tireless, a tireless worker. A philosophy of life, as I said, the, the philosophy that was propelling all his actions was this phrase that I'm going to give. To produce the greatest good for the greatest number of our people. Every time, that's what he would say. We must produce the greatest good for the greatest numbers of our people. All that we are saying is frugality, commitment, honesty, and sincerity. I like the Jack they had all that. He was appointed Minister of Works by the military government, and as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, he built the largest housing estate in Africa, Guarimpa and the Lube housing estate, those in the federal capital territory Abuja, while he started the Banana Island project. Popularly called Babaki Kiri, Latif Kaudi Jakonde was born in the Epetedo area of Lagos Island on Monday 29th July 1929 to parents who were from Umaro, Kwara State. He started his educational journey at Lagos Public School, Enowa, Lagos Island, and thereafter at Bonham Memorial Methodist School, Port Harcourt, between 1934 and 1943. He had a brief stint at King's College, Lagos, in 1943, and later proceeded to Elisha Grammar School in 1945. While in Elisha Grammar School, he edited a literary paper called the Quarterly Mirror. This set the stage for his journalism career. Press freedom is the touchstone of all the other liberties of the citizen and therefore should be the concern of every human being. An attack on press freedom in any country derogates from the totality of press freedom in the world. All too often, media men in some advanced countries, because they were born into press freedom, adopt an attitude of indifference to encroachments on press freedom in other countries. All too often, media men in some developing countries resign themselves to the pernicious doctrine that their press cannot be free for reasons which are patently absurd and grossly illogical. His thirst to further his journalism career led him to the print industry where he started his career with the Daily Service in 1949. He later moved to the Nigerian Tribune in 1953. His dedication and hard work opened the door for a rapid career growth as he was appointed editor-in-chief in 1956. His zeal for greater challenges saw him leaving Nigerian Tribune to establish his own newspaper outfit named John West Publication 
an outfit which produced the Lagos News. He later became the first president of the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria, NPAN. Yes, he established himself in the, in the journalism profession as unique, as the first in so many things. First in the establishment, he joined in the establishment of the Nigeria Union of Journalists, in the Guild of Editors, and he was the first president of the Newspaper Prospectors Association of Nigeria. Of course, he moved from there, worked himself up on the media ladder, and became the first African, the first Nigerian to date, to become the president of the International Press Institute. Jack on this passion to serve humanity led him into politics. He vied for the post of the executive governor of Lagos State under the platform of Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN, an election he won and thus marked the beginning of his many firsts as the first executive governor of the state. Well, as a governor, he holds a political clinic. Every day after office hours, where he listens to the complaints or suggestion or request of, uh, of people, of the citizens of Lagos. That could be so open to people. Go to him anytime. You will see two pieces of paper on his table. One is a pad, one is a note. The note is where you will put down what you are asking him, which he wants to respond to. And one thing good about Jack and is that if the, this, the whole house is full of character or people want to see him, he will sit and attend to everybody. You will come this way, you come this way. He said, what, what is your problem? What is your problem? If he's the one he wants to discuss with you, you say, go and wait. If he's the one that he has to send you to somebody, he will go, go and do this. When the military came back to power in Nigeria, Latin Jaconde was made Minister of Works under the late Sunny Abacha regime, a post he held from 1993 to 1998. With the reemergence of democracy, vibrant Jaconde became the first chairman of the Action Party of Nigeria, APN. In his lifetime, Latif Kaudi Jaconde was a man of high integrity who was passionate about the development of Lagos State. This saw him recording many firsts as the governor. There's no way one can say we will beat his record. His absence will be deeply felt. His death will create a vacuum in the state and in the hearts of the people of the state. His demise on Thursday, 11th February 2021 is indeed a loss to Lagos State, to Nigeria, and to humanity as a whole. Good night, LKJ. Adieu, Papa Kikiri. Thank you very much, Mr. Governor, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. We are here to celebrate the life and times of an outstanding leader, Halhaji Latif Kayode Jakonde. Please let us lighten up a bit as we now have some band performance. First on the lineup, I will invite the standing troop of the Lagos State Council of Heart and Culture to please go on to the platform and perform. You have five minutes.
Nigeria police. The police band will be entertaining us for the next three minutes. The police band.
himself. was effective and open. Baba Kekewe implemented the four cardinal programs of the Unity Party of Nigeria. UPN. These programs include free education for primary and secondary levels, free health services, food and gentle employment, and integrated rural development. Thank <laughs> you. 